Hello, and welcome to NFP Conversations. I'm your host, Peg Hensler. I'm the Associate Director for Marriage Ministries in the Diocese of Trenton, and also the, the uh, I should say, Marriage Ministries and NFP. NFP, of course, stands for Natural Family Planning. So today, we're so thrilled to be able to talk about another topic associated with natural family planning in celebration of National Natural Family Planning Awareness Week. And so for today, our topic really is, it's about how to speak to young daughters about womanhood and motherhood from the Catholic perspective. We have today a wonderful guest with us who is all about her beautiful daughters, but also all about the Catholic faith and has been able to integrate this wonderful approach to God's plan for marriage and family. Uh, into the work that she does. And I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell you a bit about her work. And so our guest today is Enza Sarami. Thank and you, Enza. It's such a, a pleasure to be with you here today. Um, so I, yes, my, my name is Enza Sarami and I am uh, the executive director and founder for Living Stones. And Living Stones is a ministry that's just dedicated to sharing the truth about God's beauty and uh, with relationships and love and marriage uh, with youth, young adults, and parents. So uh, our goal is to really um, magnify in a way that's um, engaging and practical uh, for uh, youth and young adults and parents, you know, to make it everyday life and um, to take what our faith teaches and, and why does it make sense? Why, why does God's design make us happiest, basically? Absolutely, absolutely. And when people start to really understand that, it is life changing, certainly, as you know. Um, so today, um, we really are going to be concentrating on that mother daughter connection. And so we decided that this year for Natural Family Planning Awareness Week, which is really for the full year, we start in July, it's going to be honor and celebrate this wonderful initiative of the US bishops. But we also really want to emphasize a particular theme this year, and that is the mother-daughter connection. And we feel that that's so important because moms are, of course, parents are the first and foremost teachers of their children in the faith. And it's really important for every person, whether they have a biological mom or not, to have a mother role in their life to help them to understand the changing, changes that will take place in their bodies, to help them understand this beautiful, this miraculous wonder of uh, fertility, of procreation, and all these wonderful things. And so that's kind of what we're, our focus is on. So, so Enza, you yeah. are the mother of daughters. So what is it like for you to be a Catholic mom with daughters? What, it, what is the kind of the, it's just so special and amazing and wonderful and challenging. So kind of, if you could kind of tell us, share briefly with us what it's like to be a Catholic mom with daughters. Um, I think all those things that you mentioned is beautiful and wonderful and challenging. <laughs> um, I think uh, growing up for me, I didn't have so much of the formation in our faith. And now as a mom, I try to convey that to my girls. Um, they're 11 and 13. And so it's very countercultural um, in the sense that, you know, trying to focus on their dignity and their worth uh, outside of just, let's say, appearance or uh, what they're seeing around them, especially now that they're getting into middle school years. Some, some of the things that they're seeing around them don't jive necessarily with our belief system. So <laughs> helping them to um, slowly just share snippets of you know, this is God's plan and, and this is how we're happiest, you know, and, and, and um, trying to engage them in those conversations and, um, and, and be present. Yeah. To just to hear about the different experiences they're having. <laughs> yes. To be a good listener. That's really important. And yeah. to build that sense of trust with your kids. So they can, can come to you with their Absolutely. questions. So they're not going elsewhere. And so, yeah, so that is a special challenge of being a Catholic mom and conveying the beauty of Catholic teaching about, you know, the wonder of, um, of motherhood, of parenthood, of just being a woman. Yeah. Because we do know that our kids, it is countercultural, and we do know they're being bombarded with images and with uh, concepts 
and with all kinds of messages that really teach them that they're not worth anything, that everything is te temporary, everything is instant gratification. And of course, in the Catholic faith, um, it's, it's very different from that. It's very connected to God's love for us, for being the daughter of a king, for being mm -hmm. um, a person whose life is based on the, the morals, the teachings, the values of Jesus Christ. I mean, how amazing and wonderful is that? And then you realize I'm here for a purpose. My purpose is a higher purpose. I'm just, I'm not just here to be a little kid and to be a, a person I'm here for, for a higher purpose. And to start to convey those, those messages at an early age, I think is just so important. And also the messages of modesty and all those things that, are, that have to do with human dignity are just, just so important. So um, I noticed that one of the things in your Living Stones, your, your Living Stones, your organization, your, yes. um, I might call it a project, but Living Stones is that I saw an emphasis, a beautiful emphasis on the teachings of St. John Paul II, yes. his teachings on marriage and family called Theology of the Body. Yes. Now, I believe that those concepts that can be understood at all different levels, you don't have to be a theologian to really study and, and appreciate this beautiful teaching. Yes. I think it's foundational for understanding the faith. For me personally, being doing work in marriage ministry, doing work with engaged couples, mm -hmm. when I started studying theology of the body, I started to really get it. I started to understand what, who, who I am as a human person because I don't think we really get that in this world today. So I just want to have you maybe talk about a few of the concepts that are so foundational for you in your ministries regarding TOB, Theology of the Body. So, yeah, I mean, it's really, it is life-changing in the sense that it, you have a different perspective on who you are as a person, you know, recognizing like one of the things that I always try to lay a foundation for with the uh, teens or young adults that I speak to is that they have worth, that they have dignity, that they were actually made out of love. You know, that God, you know, chose to create them and he is love itself. Right. And so they're made for love to give and receive love. So just starting with that, because I think more than ever before our youth is craving authentic love that doesn't come from social media and from this superficial world, they're leaving so empty, you know, and then the more they go to these things that they think are going to make them happy, that the more empty they feel. And I think, you know, for older generations, we had kind of a separation in the sense that if we were dealing with issues at school or having a difficult time, we could kind of leave them behind. Whereas now our kids are constantly bombarded because of social media, because of the internet, um, they don't get a break, right? And so their dignity and their value is in constant question. So really being able to lay that groundwork and to let them know that they are worthy of love and that there's something deeper, you know, and that they're called to, like you mentioned, a purpose, right? There's something, you're not just here by accident, you're here for a reason and God has a purpose and a plan for your life and how you choose to live that out um, impacts the people around you, you know? So um, yeah, that, that is, it, it, I think it's, there's so much more to it. Like you said, there's, there's so much, <laughs> but that's just kind of like the basic foundational things that I try to plant those seeds, right? Right. Yeah. And that our, that our human bodies have a language and our yes. human bodies are deeply connected to who we are as human persons. And that as humans, we are fully integrated. So we are body, mind, spirit. We are in soul beings and yeah. we have this eternal nature to us. We have a, a spark of the divine within us. And when you start to realize that, because all of us have self-esteem issues, that's part of our broken world, you know, mm -hmm. and all of us have issues with self-worth sometimes. But when we realize that God loves us, no matter what, when we mess up, which I can tell you right now that I do on a regular basis. Right. I've made so right. many mistakes. That, thank you. Thank you. So many mistakes <laughs> as a parent. And, and yet I know that in the end, uh, I think because of our Catholic faith, because of raising my, ch our children, my husband and I raising our children in the faith and just that they know they were loved by God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes maybe they felt like, I think I really messed up and my mom and dad don't love me because they're so mad at me right now. And I felt the same way growing up. 
but I always knew deep down that they loved me. And I always knew I was loved by God. I always knew that. And so even in my darkest times, I was sustained by that. And I also love the, the basic catechism. And I still say this to, to people. We're here to know God, love God, and to serve God. Why? Does God need us to, to know, love, and serve him? God is 100% complete. It's for us. Right. It's for us. It's God. This is all gift from God. And it's just so utterly beautiful and amazing. So anyway, so I think it's, it's so great to have uh, partners like you that are out there that are offering and providing this information, equipping parents, equipping the kids themselves, the teens, and looking at all the different levels of people as they, they grow and develop and constantly reminding them that because they get sucked into the secular world and they get, they really do receive messages that are very damaging, very, very damaging for, for their self-esteem. And so we constantly have to combat that. And, um, so anyway, so what's exciting is in this diocese, we have a mother-daughter event that's coming up yes. and it's called the Wonder of Eve. It's actually gonna be pro provided to us by the Archdiocese of St. Louis. Um, it's gonna be in a webinar form. So the moms of high school age kids, age ninth through, through 12th grade, uh, will be able to participate in this free webinar. And so I guess the point that I have uh, making here is, so um, what, you know, why is it so important to equip our moms? Why is that so important to introduce these uh, topics of what we would say age, age appropriate, NFP related, natural family planning related, you know, fertility awareness, appreciation, um, mixed with these beautiful teachings of John Paul II on human dignity. Why is that so important to start at an early age and then also, and moms have to do that but we need to equip the moms. Why do you think that's just utterly important? I think, well, I, like you mentioned earlier, you know, parents are the first teachers, right? And uh, our kids, even though they may not tell us this, they really look to us, right, to guide them, you know? And so it, we have to step into this uncomfortable space, <laughs> which for most parents, it is uncomfortable. And even though I do this work, it's, it's different when I have to talk to my own kids. So I get it. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> it's very different. And so I think it's, it's so important because um, our children need to hear it from us first, right? Because they're not going to hear it in the outside world. The outside world, the message that we get as women is that our bodies don't work right. We need to take outside things to make uh, us function appropriately. We need to take contraceptives because our fertility is actually a hindrance. It's a mm -hmm. problem as opposed to a gift, right? right? So it's so important to have a positive perspective. And I think as moms, you know, to gain that confidence, we have to first, and I know for me, it's a constant education. We have to educate ourselves because I didn't grow up with this information, right? So this, some of this is new to me and I'm learning as I go. And so um, what you're doing is fantastic because it gives a platform for them to have this dialogue with their daughters. And it then empowers, I think, us as women. And it's funny because our culture would say that the church you know, isn't empowering necessarily to women and that there's all these restrictions, but in reality, right. it's like, we're the best kept secret. <laughs> because I love it. I love it. You're so I, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're saying no, your body's made perfect the way it is. You just have to learn, you know, kind of the inner workings because God's design is incredible and beautiful, you know, and really we don't have to work against it. We just have to learn how to um, best work with it. So I think it's so important for them to hear it from us. Um, and that might mean that we need to, you know, again, like it always starts with, I think our own personal journey and kind of working through what we need to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it is the duty of the Catholic Church, of the diocesan offices, particularly the National Family Planning Office, to provide this information to moms so they can speak with conviction, they can yes. speak with confidence, and they can respond to any question that they get. Because oftentimes, even, even me as a, as a Catholic mom, now as ha having an adult daughter, and now I have a granddaughter who is already two and she's growing up very quickly. And so um, even I constantly need to, to go back to the, 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 the roots, 
the roots of our faith. Go back yes. to the, um, the fathers of our faith and go back to the beautiful teachings. I mean, we're so blessed to have uh, St. Paul VI with Humanae Vitae and these beautiful documents. And of course, St. John Paul II and, and now um, all confirmed by Pope Francis and Pope Benedict provided so many wonderful teachings. So I'm constantly going back to those original documents, but that's just me. I just love that stuff. But what <laughs> I wanna do is then make it palatable for others. And that's, that's my job is to, to find these connections, to find organizations like yours yes. that will equip us to be able to do this because it is the church of the home that in the end counts where our church is a family of families. Yes. So if we're not providing the proper formation, the proper, um, we're not providing the proper resources yes. to our families, then we're not doing our due diligence. We're not doing our job. So I would like you to um, give your website so that people can go to your website, your Living Stones website, and find out about the things that you're offering. You mentioned something earlier before we, we were on camera about a new project sure. you're doing. So I'd love to turn it over to you and just uh, just let people know about those things. Thank you so much, Peg. So yes, yeah, so Living Stones, like I said, is um, the nonprofit that um, I run in the ministry. And what, like Peg said, I just love to equip you know, and inform our youth so they know what's possible, you know, really what God has called them to, the vision, so that they can be informed and have the freedom to choose, right? Because we want them to be informed. And so the happiestpeople.org is the website, happiestpeople.org, because we know that the people with the most intact relationships are the happiest people. And so working with youth and young adults, but also parenting courageously is another program that I do, and that is really to equip parents with how to have these conversations about the beauty of our sexuality and dating with purpose and purity uh, for parents, because we, you're called to this, right? So we want to just encourage and empower parents uh, to do what you're called to do. So, yes. Fantastic. That's so wonderful. So Enza, is available for she's you know you're a speaker right you're yeah i go to schools parishes youth groups yeah um, to so for meetings. any parish people that are watching this and this is a tremendous resource for us of course her ministries are a tremendous resource and i also want to draw people to our web pages where we're providing a whole ton of resources and it's we have a main landing page where we have that will lead you to all the different pages there's nfp for couples mother-daughter connection, NFP for clergy, kind of NFP for, for it's, it's the hopefully the full service, one-stop shop for NFP information. And that is dioceseoftrenton.org slash natural dash family dash planning. So once again, Enza, I want to thank you. I want to thank you uh, and your beautiful daughters because they're coming through in this conversation. Someday perhaps I'll meet them and um, You've been just wonderful. So thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too, Peg.